Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Austin, and when we left off with our Unity game development tutorial series, we had created a public variable in a class and attached that script to an object. Here's that object, here's that variable inside that class. In this part, we're going to affect that variable. We're going to decrease that variable as if the player's taking damage or something silly like that. And to do that, we're going to use a couple methods. Pretty simple stuff. Before we do that though, I want to set up a mono behavior method. Something that comes inside the mono behavior class that we're inheriting from that we can use. That method is going to be a one you'll use quite a bit. And to start off a method, you have to decide, should this method return something? Will it give? Will it do something and get a result? Will it do some calculations and return an integer, like a number? So will I say, when I run this function, am I wanting to know what five plus five is? If I am, I want it to return what the value is, which would be 10. And then to do that, I would start the method declaration off with int. So I want this method to return an integer, right? So I started off with int. First, you can decide whether it's a public or a private method. Don't forget that. And then you'll go to define the method name. So I would say calculate uh, a number, right? That's the name of the method. Now I want to put two little parentheses at the end of that. Now what this will do in the future is it will hold some parameters that we will use to modify the method. But for now, you just have that. That's that's the, that's the how we'll define when we're calling a method with these two parentheses. No arguments inside of it though. Then we'll block that out with the curly braces. So inside of this, I could say, uh, I could do something that would generate a number, but that's not the point. I just wanted to give you an example of a, of a method. What we're doing though is we're gonna do a method that doesn't return anything. It just does whatever, whatever is in it. And it, it just performs the actions of the stuff that's inside of it. To do that, you'll do a void. Now a void, if I can do that, a void returns nothing. It's a, it returns void, it's empty, it's null, no return whatsoever. And then we're gonna set up the name of it, but this one is already built into mono behavior. And it is going to be, we'll do, we'll do, hmm, start, we'll do a start. Now start is called when the script is enabled. So whenever the demo class script is enabled, which means if it's on an object that gets initialized, that gets put into the world. So the idea is with start, whenever the script becomes active, everything inside of this will run. And there's another one that's pretty similar, you need to know the difference between, and that's awake. Now awake will, uh, it'll whatever's inside this will go, well it'll be called whenever the game object that the script's attached to is initialized. The script itself doesn't necessarily have to be activated. It just has to be on an object that is initialized. So we're going to do it on start. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to do a print statement. Now a print statement will send a, a statement to the console and it will give us some information. Whatever we pass into these parentheses, it will give us the information of. I want to know what the health value is. We know what the health value is because we can see it in the inspector. I just want to show you something different, right? I'll show you a print statement. And before this though, I want to put a string. So I'm going to use some quotes. And inside of this, I'm going to say, there's an error, but I'll show you how to fix that. Inside of this, I want to say player health, and then colon, and then a space. Now after this, we're going to concatenate the value of health onto it. So we're going to say plus. So we want the player health as a string. And then after that, I want to print the health value. So say player health space health value. So hit control S, we come to Unity. And if you go to the console here and you click play, whenever this starts, it'll say, hey, the player health is 15. And that's what we should do, right? Notice when I click play, it goes to the game view, which is where you test the game. But the cube's black and there's no, there's nothing going on, there's no lighting or anything. So it looks kind of simple. But player health 15, and it does match that. Now, if this updates during game, this print statement won't change because that's only called at the beginning 
of that script whenever it's first initialized. So that's not going to change throughout the game. Anything in start just happens at the beginning of that script's life. So we can get rid of that. What I do want to do is I want to lower the value of health. So I can just say health is equal to 10 whenever you start. So health is equal to the value of 10. But that doesn't make any sense. What if the health was 150 and now it's equal to 10? That means you did 140 damage. Not good. What we can do is subtract from the value of health. So I could just say health minus 10. No, because then it's not, it's a result, but there's nothing that has that result. There's nothing storing that result. What I could do is say health minus equals 10. So what that's going to do is take the health value, subtract 10 from it, and then set it to equal itself again. So it's going to equal whatever health was minus 10, which would be 5. Hit control S will test this out. When I click play, watch my health go from negative 31 to negative 41. Put that back up to 15, so we're in the positives. 15 to 5. That's what it should do. Now if I was to print that after this happens in the start, it'll tell me the same thing in the, in the console. Pretty cool. But I don't like this idea. I don't like this way of doing it. So we're going to get rid of this. And in the start, I want to call a method that will damage the player. I don't want to do it just directly. I want to have a method that will take a value and subtract that value from the player's health. So what I'll do is we'll set up a method first. This method will not have to return anything, so it'll be a void. There's no result. It just does whatever's inside of it. I'm going to say damage player is the name, parentheses, and block that out. Now to call this method in start, what I would do is I would say damage player, and see it can auto complete it for me, and then parentheses, and then semicolon to end that. That's what I would do to call that method. And anything inside of this would then, uh, it would then be called and it would do whatever it says to do. So I say again, health minus equals five. Now at the start, it'll do the exact same thing, except it's doing it a bit differently. It's going a different way. So that's cool. What's the point of that? It's the same thing. Well, now I can pass a value through the method call and use that as a parameter in the method itself and then subtract that value from the health. How do I do that? Well, first of all, inside these parentheses, like I said, we'll set up a parameter, an argument of some kind. And, it's, and this one's going to be an integer again. We're working in all numbers here. Nothing different than just this whole number. So we're going to set up a variable kind of thing, right? We're going to initialize an integer variable for this method. So int and then damage will be the name of it. So you don't have to initialize this one before you can use it like you do most of the time, right? You're initializing it within the method call itself. So now I can take that and I can say damage. But that has no value right now because passing it through, we didn't pass a damage value. But what we can do now is pass a damage value of 10. So damage player for the value of 10. So damage player would take 10, say, oh, so 10 should be stored in the damage variable. And then when it runs it, it finds the damage variable and says, okay, so that's equal to whatever the player passed through. So health minus equals 10. So if we play this, and just with the change of a single value, it does it. You don't have to do anything differently now. So I can say, actually, I want to remove all of his health, which he has 15. So we'll do 15. I click play, you go down to zero. Now, what if I wanted to remove all of his health at once, right? So I could say, remove the value of health from health. And that will do the same thing. It will take it down to zero, as you can see there. Pretty cool stuff. In the next part, I'll go over how you can check to see what the health is and do something when it gets to a certain point. So say when the health gets down to zero, you want to get rid of the object. The object no longer exists because it died, has no health left. And we'll go in how to do that.